American buffalo, or bison, once ruled the Great Plains of the United States. But in the late 1800s, the massive wild animals were nearly extinct because of overhunting. Now, more than 100 years later, bison are making a comeback, not only in numbers, but as a food source. These majestic animals have deep roots in Oklahoma history. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. When those words were written in the late 1800s, the American buffalo, also known as bison, was nearly extinct in the United States. Less than a thousand head were grazing on American grassland, a far cry from the estimated 30 to 60 million that populated the land at one time. Long ago, bison thrived because Native Americans knew how to provide the best food for the animals. Bob Hamilton of the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve near Pawhuska explains. What we think was going on was this fire grazing interaction. Burn it and they will come. So the, that lush regrowth that comes up after a fire is, is an incredible draw to all kinds of herbivores. Whether you're talking big herbivores like bison or cattle or small herbivores like grasshoppers. Native Americans used the buffalo for food, their hides for clothing and shelter, and their bones for weapons and tools. The decimation of the huge North American herds was the result of commercial slaughtering encouraged by the government. The policies of the U.S. government, of course, were to eliminate bison as a way of domesticating uh, the Plains Indian tribes. So it, bison were so important in terms of a food source and all their other products uh, that gave the, that Native peoples used, uh, the strategy was to, to you know, get rid of the grocery store. In the early 1900s, ranchers who believed in preserving the species started raising bison on their private land and slowly, the majestic animals started to repopulate. And the estimates are now half a million bison or so uh, are alive. Most of those are in private herds. Uh, that's where the real growth has been, especially in the last 30, 40 years, has been in the private sector. A Bartlesville couple donated their herd of 300 bison to the Nature Conservancy and its tall grass prairie preserve more than 20 years ago. Today, nearly 2,800 bison roam freely on the 40,000 acre preserve. It's believed that is an optimal number that can be sustained on the land. Each year, the preserve has a roundup and sells 500 bison to people who raise their own. Bernie and Sheila Fioravanti raise a herd of about 60 on their Wagner Ranch, which has been in the family for more than 100 years. Sheila believes buffalo grazed their land before white men ever set foot here. My dad said that there's wallows all over this, where they roamed here before. And there were wallers all over this countryside that are hundreds of years old, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Each year, the Fioravantes slaughter some bison for their commercial business. They sell the meat to the Oklahoma Food Cooperative at the Broken Arrow Farmers Market and online. They also sell direct to customers at the ranch. Bison meat is considered a gourmet meat, so it's higher than beef. Bison is more than twice the cost of beef. That's due in part because they are grass-fed, are given no growth hormones, and because the demand for it is outstripping supply. Bison meat has half the calories of beef and contains very little fat. Many cardiologists recommend bison because it is low in cholesterol. Bernie says he keeps his prices competitive, but doesn't make as much as larger suppliers that send older and larger bison to slaughter. They get more meat and they get more money because no one's discriminating between my meat and theirs. And uh, so it's better financially for them to do that, but we won't do that. We sell high quality meat and that's, that's our whole thing. We want high quality meat. The Fioravantes only slaughter two-year-old bison weighing under a thousand pounds. If you get older than that or larger than that, uh, you get into old animals and it's okay for burger meat, but it doesn't make as good or tasty or tender a steak or roast as the other does. Sizzling buffalo burgers are on the menu at Buffalo Joe's restaurant in Pawhuska, less than 20 minutes from the tall grass prairie preserve. Tourists sometimes pack the house. All of the people that come here on vacation, you can tell when they hit in July and August and we go through triple the buffalo because they want to know what it's like. These local patrons just tried the buffalo burger for the first time. 
it was lean and it was, it was really good. I liked it. I couldn't tell the difference between it or beef. I honestly think that if people didn't know the difference, they might not know the difference. Although it wasn't greasy. You know, beef is sometimes greasy. Susan Clifton of Bartlesville buys a whole side of bison at a time and keeps it in a freezer. If we buy buffalo, we don't buy beef. And so I cook it for when we have hamburger, steak, roast, um, casseroles, any other dish that I would put beef in, I use buffalo meat. Bison is being sold at more and more food markets and is drawing in customers at Harvard Meats in Tulsa. It sells out. A lot of times our vendors, you know, it'll be on back order with them because a lot of people are starting to figure out that it's a lot leaner for them. Katina Brackett says all cuts are popular. We have several of the different steaks, the New York strip, the ribeye steak, the sirloin steak. So just pretty much anything how you're going to cook beef is how you would cook the buffalo. It is a lot leaner, so you want to make sure that you don't overcook it. So is it tender? It's very tender. Because the bison business is now in a strong economic position, the National Bison Association is encouraging more farmers and ranchers to start raising America's original red meat.